Hey guys, Wrestling Mayhem Show. This week we talk about Kane, the New Day, just being awesome on General and WWE International Podcast Day and what you're listening to in wrestling podcasts. Help with a little pro wrestling group therapy, Bound for Glory. Hey, that's happening this weekend and so much more. Stick around. Parental discretion is advised. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. It's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. It's time to talk professionalized wrestling, men in tights, and the ladies who happen to be there as well. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters. It's episode 489 of the Wrestling Mayhem Show, live from Pittsburgh, PA, and Mayhem Studios. And with me, I have a wonderful collection of Mayhemers, wrestling fans, and some people that may be a little closer to professional wrestling. Let's go down the line here. First of all, uh, representing uh, uh, well Austin, Texas, by way of San Antonio. Uh, he is the uh, ringside announcer for Inspire Pro Wrestling down there. He is at Eamon2, please. Eamon Payton, how you doing tonight, sir? Fantastic as always, Sorg. Uh, I, I'm glad to uh, glad to talk about some of the mainstream wrestling and take a break from all the amazingness that is indie wrestling. Uh, I, yeah, it's sad to be on. It's too amazing. You got to simmer it down a little bit, right? Too amazing. Got to got to take it down. Take it down. Take it down. Match. Simmer down. Simmer down. Also with us representing Poughkeepsie, New York. He's a former employee, future endeavored by the WWE. He is at <laughs> Mike Four Eight Eight Three. I'm at Mad Mike 4883, but you know, I'm what not really it? that mad right now, so I guess just Mike 4883. How you doing, Sork? There you go, there you go. And also joining us, he is the man behind Panel Riot, and the man that's creeping while you're sleeping in the streets of Pittsburgh, and also looks very eerily similar to somebody named Sawtooth Willie you can check out on the YouTubes and the Facebooks. <laughs> it's Papa Lunchbox. Hello, Mayhem Americans. I am DJ Lunchbox, and I'm running for President of these United States. I promise to never wear pants when I'm in the White House, reduce taxes or whatever, and finally convince America to do away with boat shoes. Together, we, yes, together, we, America. The platform is strong with this one. And also we have the a platform is strong. <laughs> <laughs> also, together we yes that's a shirt that's a shirt yes. together we together yes please. we america <laughs> somebody write that down and get cars or i'm sorry uh get uh cars to make cars. a shirt i don't know <laughs> what we're we talking about they're all in a different time zone so they blend together to me apparently sorry Eamon, you too um but <laughs> It's Carza. Listen, that's, 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 listen, that's it everybody, everybody west of the Mississippi looks the same to me, okay? Um, Ooh, broad brush. <laughs> with that, uh, we have a guest. You've been hearing him, and uh, he is the uh, ring announcer, sometimes commentator with Re Renegade Wrestling Alliance, and also around uh, here and there for Vicious Outcast Wrestling, mm -hmm. and, and he just, he just, he just is all about the uh, indie wrestling circuit in the Pittsburgh, greater Pittsburgh area. He is old school. Burt LeGrant joining us here in the studio. In the studios in the fine hallowed halls of Sorgatron Manor. How are Welcome you Welcome to today? Mayhem Studios, sir. I thank you very much. My first this time been... my first time in the dungeon here, and I love it. In this the is dungeon. great. <laughs> this is great. It's more accurate. You haven't seen where we shoot Sawtooth Willie over there in the corner. It's more dungeon than most, right? Uh, so <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. Uh, so now, uh, Burt here is going to be actually joining us on indie mayhem show we're gonna yep. have a longer conversation uh with him but first can you, can you i don't know, touch base what what is who is the real burt legrand in 30 seconds or who's the real Bert Le, the real burt legrand by the way is that is that an indirect plug for twitter by the way it could be real osbl it could be my my, my social media muse here uh sorgatron is uh has got me to uh finally get off the duff as it were and uh create my own uh, twitter account so going live at live as of last night but yeah I've been a fan, uh, been a fan for thirty years, ever since the first WrestleMania, and uh, been doing it locally here for fourteen, actually, since uh, June of '01, starting with uh, Far North Wrestling and uh, a couple wow. other, couple other names of uh, 
Fed's gone by here, but uh, yeah, do the R- R- RWA thing, VOW, CWF. Well, relevant to this, Far North is actually the promotion run by uh, Corey Gray's father, right? Yep. Yes, so, yes, Dan Polinsky. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get a little deeper in that on the Indie Mayhem no show. Doubt. Please check that out. That's going to be episode 89 as long as everything holds up here technologically. <laughs> I hate pre... This is why I don't pre-advertise uh, things. Right. Because I never know. Um, you know, like we had the entire stream go down on Boss Battle tonight, so... Eh, okay uh so anyways this is your wrestling mayhem show and when the technology works you can go to wrestling mayhem show.com to subscribe to us uh and this and and so many other shows we have going on uh the midweek war the raw wrap-up <coughs> where we're actually experimenting with that a little bit with blab.im if you're not familiar with that to get a little more interactivity you can join us there on uh monday nights the raw or i'm sorry the um Midweek War, if I didn't mention that, Indie Mayhem Show. They're talking about Total Divas. There's Kickstarter. Hold on. Uh, well, he's he, in, 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 To talk about mainstream wrestling, yes, he's got Kickstarter going on there. Please sponsor yeah. us. So, uh, but anyways, uh, I forgot the rest of my plugs. Check us out. Uh, uh, the email address, of course, is good times. Good times at WrestlingMamShow.com where we have the hotline 412-206-WMS0. Uh, please follow our Patreon. Uh, you can become a supporter, patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. And, of course, our longtime supporters, including Mo Diggity. Woo! Who pays us uh, every episode to make sure we pronounce his name in such a fashion i never got some feedback he was actually on awesome cast this week and i should have uh <laughs> double checked if he was uh down with the style that we were throwing in on that uh but also our supporters of the wrestling revolution.com slash zero slash garza slash <laughs> whatever else we call him as we were discussing on the gold this week and hey, also man, he, he gives us money we will call him whatever he wants to be called that's right that works. all he has to do is tell us what the fuck do you want to be called <laughs> and also our good buddy on the Twitter is Ed Burke has a, is a more recent supporter of the show. Thank you so much. You guys are, are really, you know, you, you're putting the, your money where your ears are and supporting Wrestling Mayhem shows. So some of you also supporting Panel Riot. We have supporters on, over on Awesome Cast, and and and, and I, we really appreciate that. I mean, that's that's a supporting podcast, is supporting independence, and uh, and 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 please sp- spread the love. If you're listening, if you dig the show, if you find it worthwhile, it's okay if you don't have the money to pop in. Just tell a friend. Support our our friends and our sponsors on the show on the show iTunes comments iTunes comments <laughs> iTunes comments is huge if you can just eke out there International Podcast Day is tomorrow International Podcast Day I knew that was coming we'll be talking about that more in the in the uh, in, in later in the show but just uh, support somebody if it's our show if it's other shows uh, uh, just that iTunes comment star rating whatever is huge you don't even know as far as mm-hmm. one motivation for that podcast provider and two uh, it just generally it helps get them up in iTunes yep. so so please go check that out uh, and, and support your podcast so let's get into our first topic of the night let's talk about King guys I, I, we talked about him a little bit in the past weeks and on the raw wrap ups and everything but again a couple of you guys haven't been on the show for a bit and I know you have opinions on them uh so first kane i i think is the most magical thing happening no the second most magical thing yep. happening on raw right now behind the new day yep. <laughs> so uh i forget which one of you was most hyped about kane and wanted to talk about it this guy okay okay what's going on lb uh i love kane i love kane i i watched i tried to watch a little bit of raw last night and um We'll get into that later, but uh, I love Kane. I love, I love uh, over the top, really happy manager Kane, and I also love uh, super uh, uh, brutal, crazy, violent demon Kane. I'm on board, guys. I'm on board. <laughs> it's great. It's it's fascinating. It's it's a more focused uh, take on Kane, and it's the most interested I've been in Kane. It, Years since he was uh, uh, taken uh, uh, fucking Ed. sessions with Daniel Bryan, hug yep. sessions with Daniel Bryan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's great. I'm totally on board, 100. percent I think it's just another chapter in the uh, unbelievable kayfabe history of Kane. <laughs> in terms, <laughs> right? of, in terms of a character, there's never been anything that's gone that that has been what he's been through. And, and I agree. I mean, the, the most entertaining he's been since Hell No. 
mm-hmm. uh, by far. And I know he's, he, it's basically a direct ripoff of TNA in terms of how, how many times we've been able, able to see that about a working WWE angle, but it works. <laughs> and, he, and, he, and they're there with this. And, uh, you know, yeah, it's going to be a, a placeholder for uh, one or two months for Seth, but, you know, it, it, it's going really well. Do you think uh, th- this is my kind of take on this? So obviously, uh, this is the first thing that we, you know, we, we, you know, you just said it right there. It feels like they're taking that right out of TNA with Abyss and Joseph Park, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, in the same weekend, we had pay per views with somebody defending the world in the secondary title with Seth Rollins and Jay Lethal. Mm-hmm. Um, do we feel like it, it, to cross this over with our other podcast? Do you think WWE is becoming the apple of the wrestling industry that they're not inventing concepts, but they're doing them? Um, maybe more to perfection on, on on a bigger scale in front of more people. As can, should I back that up on what I mean about the Apple thing? Right. Like Apple does yeah, not. They're, they're not, no, they're no, not they're Apple doesn't. They're in, improving. Yeah, exactly. Apple yeah. doesn't improve on. They didn't invent things like voice search. They didn't invent things uh, like the fingerprint reader. But they introduce them after everybody else did and right. do them the right way. Let and, everybody else make the mistakes. On a, on a, yeah, on a grander scale, we can say. Um, there's also been this kind of complaint amongst the indie wrestlers that they're seeing parts of their gimmicks and things that have been experimented on happen in NXT, which again lends to the hey, nothing's really that new sure. in pro wrestling. Everything's recycled. Um, I, what, what you guys yeah, think? I don't it, think it, it's. I don't. I don't think it's a new thing for WWE either. No, like no, I, no. I, they've been doing this for a long time. You know, um, there is stuff they've created on their own. You know, but they, you know, WWE has taken uh, from other places. Sometimes they do it well. Sometimes they don't. But uh, it's you know, like you said, there's so little that's new in wrestling. You know, so it's like. What more can you, you know? Right. I, I don't even know if the whole thing with Kane was an intentional like rip off of the TNA thing. You know, mm-hmm. it could have just been a subconscious. Hey, this is a cool story we can do. You know. Right. 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 And I don't mean this to to kind of point out WWE being like a, a, a hack me too or anything like that. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I no. think I think it's a strategy and it works. You know, if it if that is the intentional case. Um, hey, the NWO was at least partially admitted as as a partial idea that uh, Bischoff got from New Japan. Right, that was doing something at the time in the recent uh, Legends talk with yeah. JBL. And if not, if ninety ninety five percent of the audience doesn't see that, then mm-hmm. you know, so be it. It only takes the hardcore people, the hardcore fans, to see that. Yes, there is a connection somewhere along the way. But you know, all you know, Buffalo last night. How many people? Thought that was very original, the the Kane deal. Mm-hmm. Grand, pretty much all of them, I would bet. Right. Yeah. Right. I kind of wish they would take the Kane stuff, the Kane stuff, a step further, and have like Kane attack Rollins in the mouth or something like that, and then Kane has, and then Rollins has to go to the company dentist, and it's Isaac Yankum. Yep. One more. <laughs> but but they Full don't circle. acknowledge it at all. Like it's a it's just a regular dude. But when Rollins looks up, he sees it. It's Isaac Yankum. Just so you want like some Hogan, Seth, Hogan like Warrior WCW thing. stuff in there? That... <laughs> I'd be okay with that. Like yeah. if we had, if we said that Kevin Nash was going to be on Raw, Kane uh, Rollins would be all scared. There was the fake Diesel, like <laughs> just everything, <laughs> every former gimmick he's ever had. That'd be great. That'd be a great callback, right? Mm-hmm. And of course, anybody knew was like, what is what the hell is going on? Right. But but it's a great callback. But that's for... not for them. If they if they can make a if they can put a person in a giant hand suit and have him hang out with Mark Henry backstage, yep. we can do a call back to Isaac Yankum. Mm-hmm. Certainly. Um, other than that, uh, okay, I know there was a couple other things uh, from, from the show. I, Bert, I, we, talk, we yep. talked at length about New Day and how amazing they've been, but Incredible. I know you you told me you wanted to do uh, two, two hours talking about New Day. I'll give you a couple minutes well, I think here. The, the, interesting, <laughs> I mean, the interesting part about New Day is that, and, and you know, forgive me if I'm, if I'm you know, being a dead horse here, but they're doing the they're doing the Jericho uh, you know WCW run to a to a T in terms of take talented guys, give them a blank canvas, give them ten minutes to get over. Mm-hmm. So let's see what you can do. And they're doing what they're doing is so, in my opinion, anyway, uniquely original. Even on like an indie level, I've not seen what they some of the stuff they've done like anywhere. And that's just them being themselves and, and going all in on the creativity with nothing to lose. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what makes it absolutely amazing. I mean, three very talented, charismatic performers. And we've seen it in drips and drabs throughout the years in their relative gimmicks. But now that you know the, the shackles are off, the chains are off, whatever, and they can be who they want to be, and, and it works. And I think that's, that's probably the most amazing part about the whole thing is that it, it works so well. 
and it's getting so over with even the you know the more dormant crowds that gimmick for better or worse is working i think that's that is just is amazing and, and literally they are for me the must see you know entity on the show on any show they're on and and more often than not if they're on raw i'll tune out as soon as they're done mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um I, and again I, I, uh, uh uh will i'll be i think you're you're back here on your internet it's kind of flaking out a little bit seems to be the trend yes. tonight with the local yes, weather that, that's correct mm-hmm. i fought a blue screen of death and oh no won. Oh, oh he's oh back uh, i know you have some thoughts on new day uh you wanted to share as well tremendous one <laughs> <laughs> no they're great they're great i, I totally agree with the, the the tail end of what i heard there was that um um if you've got these performers that are uh, brilliant and you know we've we've only kind of seen glimpses at it i mean there was a day when if you wanted to see um uh big e doing something really entertaining you had to uh subscribe to him on instagram yep. for the weird videos that he did with uh, with caitlin and aj yep. um and uh it, it's i mean i feel like kofi for a long time has been totally underutilized even when he was being pushed uh in, in the main events or you know when he had the uh, tag titles with cm punk and everything like that it just felt like it felt like something something was holding him back, but it doesn't feel like that anymore. And I love that these guys are getting multiple tag title runs. I love that they're not a flash in the pan like uh, like uh, oh they, they're a entertaining tag team for a week and then we're going to split them up or whatever. And and uh, it's it's good. It's good to see that they're investing their time and effort into uh, into New Day and letting them do whatever they want. I mean, uh, obviously, someone in the back said, uh, uh, "Oh, I didn't know you play trombone. Go play hmm. it in the ring." Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. they saw that the crowd reaction was so good that they continued to let him just play it in the ring. He just plays stuff now. Mm-hmm. He plays the fucking victory theme from <laughs> Final <laughs> Fantasy. I came when I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was, they, it's, they it's did beat wonderful. John Cena last night. They, yep. Beat, yep. Ah, they beat John Cena and the Dudleys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's like it's, that's like taking 2003 and stopping it in the face. Yeah, it's good times. <laughs> it's good times with the new day. Oh, so good. I mean, I, I guess, and we went to roll into this. Uh, I think most of you have seen the table for threes uh, yep. with New Day, uh, and, and there's been a couple other ones as well. And, and they really get into like having that opportunity and saying we're going to do this, and 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 even saying we weren't going to accept the no. And we were going to accept that this failed because there was nothing else for us. This right. idea is what we have. And this idea is where we're going to go and where we're going to make bank on this thing. And and to see them, you know, around that table and on pretty much doing the victory dance, you know, they're kind of mid, you know, there's there's so much more they can do. But but the idea came to fruition and the idea adapted. And 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 again, uh, we've talked about a couple of weeks ago about um what is, does it take to get give young talent like that or talent not in a spot a chance like that? Um, I think, Eamon, you were about part of that conversation pretty deep as well. Um, so it's really interesting to see that. And, and, and that WWE reveals so much on WWE Network yep. about, yeah, this is the political yeah. thing that got this on TV. You and, know? and I think, I think it helps that for the first time for a relatively new act that maybe is not, not – you know, a homegrown creation in terms, I mean, the performers, yes, but in terms of the actual gimmick and where the New Day is taking it, I think this is the first time that you can tell that WWE is all in with this. And I think as soon as they yeah. saw the crowds going mega over for them, mm-hmm. they scrambled. I'm sure that the, the table for three wasn't in, in the works as recently as a month and a half ago. I'm sure that you know, all the all the social media and things they're doing are, were, weren't in the works. And you could tell that's partially the New Day's influence as well. I mean, Find me more three, more act, more active. You know, three members of the roster for social media. And, and I think the uh, the table for three especially like shows to me at least like how the the personalities they show on on TV aren't far from the personalities they actually you know that they actually are. Mm-hmm. They do have a bit of, of, of a friendship with one another, right. and that's cool to see. So it it makes it seem more natural, and it makes it seem like oh these guys really just hit it off, and they just had this you know magic you know working with each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's great that WWE sees that and says hey let's capitalize on that, you know instead yeah. of instead of like the old WWE I guess kind of way people perceive WWE is that they just kind of take whatever they think will work and like pound it in. You know this was them you know seeing something and and trying to make it you know uh, and trying to put as much as they can into it. 
I mean, it's very much kind of like the Attitude Era. Like, the yep. Attitude Era, a lot of people chalk it up to that's when wrestling was vulgar and violent and sexual and stuff like that. And that's not how I see the Attitude Era. I mean, it was a lot of those things, but the Attitude Era was letting guys develop their own gimmick. Yep. <laughs> like, I mean, when I see New Day, when I see uh, Kofi, Biggie, and Xavier, all I see are Edge, Christian, and Kurt Angle. Exactly. Very true. I mean, you even upgrade the kazoo into a trombone, and right. you basically have the same thing. And the one thing I don't see is color. I, I no, don't. See, I, don't I don't see, see them for the first time. You know, maybe the three of them and and, 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 and Sasha Banks and, and other ones. I don't necessarily see color. I don't see them doing any color specific gimmicks. I don't see them. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I don't see like the Crime Time version two or anything like that. Mm-hmm. I see them just being themselves. It was a little scary when they started with the preacher gimmick. Oh yeah! But once they Very once so. they dropped that, yeah, once they dropped that. It was like it, it evolved, but it evolved mm-hmm. too. And weren't they ones that people were having problems with when they first came out about being too much of a, yeah, yeah, a black definitely. stereotype? Oh, gimmick? A little bit, yeah. Then and then you sort of you, you get lost in. It. And they were supposed to be the the new nation was where they're going right, right, before, right. Before and, Ferguson, and they commented on that uh, about that right. idea actually being floated around. I guess as speculation. Yep. I don't think it was actually ever in play. No, uh, on the table for three special. Um, so, which I'm really glad they didn't. <laughs> to right, be quite honest, this is way more entertaining than I, that idea. This is something that they own. You know, it's more than just a preacher it, it preacher gimmick. It, it is that positivity thing, and it's both it's both loved and hated. Right. I think at this point, in equal respects, wherever they might be, um, that's and when, fantastic. And when they reference color, yeah, you know, I thought, you know, it, it was it was swept under the rug. But I thought Kofi had the line of the night last night when he said, "Oh, you, th- you know, they think we can't swim." <laughs> I, I howled when I heard that. I died when I heard that line. Wow! It was so it was so buried. It was so buried and everything else. But yeah, I, yeah. I absolutely died when I heard that. I mean, it, 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 that's the thing. It, it's very unique. It's very them. It's very the geek. The geek points because Xavier is the biggest geek ever. Um, <laughs> if, if you follow his tweets, I mean, I uh, every Triforce year Triforce tattoo. Every Triforce tattoo. He goes to up, up down down. Yeah, up, the, up, up, down, down is his video oh, up, game up, channel. Up, down, down is the greatest. He's, yes. at, he's at Dragon Con every year if you follow his Instagram and tweets. Yeah, he, I think he, he dressed as Jem the second night. Um, <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> it was absolutely amazing. Go look up his Dragon Con no, cosplay. Sword, sword. Hmm. That's truly outrageous. Oh, Let's it be. was. It was. And it might be his next gimmick, too. Um, but anyways, so yeah, don't let WWE see your Dragon Con picks, Xavier. Otherwise, you'll just be dropped in a new gimmick. I, I love that thing when you're dressed up like Jem. Um, hey, you know what? <laughs> If it's, a, if it's Xavier in the holograms, that would be okay too. Sort. <laughs> don't is, is, the don't they special. have him doing a uh, like a video game review show for like through right. the WWE? Right, right. Yeah. No, it's actually a Let's Play. That's what I was referring to. Was the video game channel he has on YouTube, and it's mm. actually uh, it's actually a Let's Play uh, channel. So and and uh, it's, it's highly entertaining. Also, you get to see again a lot of that background. Just the guys mm-hmm. in the back huddled in a locker room yep. playing Street Fighter, including like Ro- Rusev, and they give everybody different names, not even their real name or, or wrestling name or anything. Like what is what is Rusev like El Pupio or something? Um, like like it says something ridiculous. And, uh, and 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 again, it's 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 not just them playing the games; it's them having conversations too, just in general. You're like he was just having a conversation with Rusev about just shooting shooting the shooting the shit. You know, with Rusev, which you don't see much more than the character, and he hasn't done like a Stone Cold podcast or anything yet, um, which I think would be very interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, no, I think it's 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 cool. It's um, I do you think Xavier Woods and Cody Rhodes are good buddies backstage? Because I think they're both equally as geeky. Oh, uh, but I'm sure there's plenty there. of those guys back there, right? So, um, anyways. I also think it's really funny that Kofi's the grizzled veteran of that group. Yep. Pops. Like on, on the on the table for three, they're like, "Oh yeah, man, we grew up watching Kofi Kingston." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and there's the part where they're like, "We don't even know if we wanted to ask you. Like, we didn't like, you know, you you've been around. We're the new guys, you know. What what do we do?" Uh, by the way, I I, I loved uh, uh, Biggie going at it with uh, John Cena. Can I get more of that, please? <laughs> you know, I mean, he, mm-hmm. he looks like physically. Uh, physically equal to him, and I think I think just like can he come out for next week's Hope and Challenge? Yep. You know, it reminded he, me back when we we used to enjoy Dolph Ziggler. Right. 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 When Ziggler had AJ and uh, and Biggie, and they were Team Rocket, and they were going up against John Cena, and things were right with the world, and mm-hmm. 
and then they went all to hell. Uh, those were the <laughs> days. Those were the days. Well, anyways, on that point, uh, when I come back around, we're going to talk about, uh, again, uh, podcast day is uh, tomorrow. When I want to talk about what you guys are listening There's to. No how are the wrestling? Day. What's that? <laughs> What's that? Uh, nope. No? Okay. Uh, but in the meantime, <laughs> don't, hey. Don't if, even worry about it. If you like, if you like uh, the stuff you're seeing on TV, hey, a lot of the guys, even some of the guys we just mentioned, you can see around. Uh, uh, dig around a little bit. Maybe you'll find them on the indies. Maybe you'll find some good old stuff before yep. they're even in NXT, you know? Some of it in the Pittsburgh area. Uh, maybe not those guys we talked about specifically, but definitely a lot of them, they're on TV. Like a certain mm-hmm. uh, Corey Graves might be around in a certain promotion that one Burt LeGrand works for. That's currently. Right. I've managed him. You, you managed Burt? You can't? You, I've managed and Sterling James Keenan, yes. No way. He's the reason I got hit in the head with street sign. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. There it is. And of course, a, a multi time uh, a friend of the Wrestling Mayhem show over the years um, that we've had about plenty of interviews. Again, as Sterling James Keenan, so you got to know the other names. Yep. But other than that, Eamon just went straight for his camera and it freaked me out. <laughs> he just like <laughs> leaned forward. And I'm like, he's coming right at me. <laughs> oh, no. This podcast is now in 3D. <laughs> 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 into your living room or into your car because this is on the commute isn't it guys um anyways i'm sorry audio listeners uh but you can support pro wrestling and maybe the next Corey gray's next sammy zane the next seth rollins indie wrestling.us a look into the future uh including you know, hey there's a show you just did bert uh yep. the uh fall free for all with sanjay dutt against amazing red Incredible a tremendous match. match one of the Incredible. best in the building to date period I, you cannot deny that other great stuff like hey some familiar faces tommy dreamer <clears throat> versus rhino in a steel cage last month with iwc uh aftershock digital download already up there from the weekend the brand new best of dalton castle volume one and two rise of the peacock you can check that out on there we have bundles on there so you can get both volumes you can enjoy that and also we have some great blogs going on there indie mayhem show of course is supported on the show on on the website but you can also check out around the indies by our friend in the mainstream Matt Carlins has been writing that out, compiling the best of the weekend every week. And uh, it's been getting a lot. You don't know Bernie Sanders, you know, presidential hopeful, <laughs> hopeful, hopeful, question mark. I, I don't get into the politics on this show, <laughs> uh, not of the actual political nature. Um, <clears throat> but uh, but he was spotted uh, actually this weekend at a pro wrestling show. Um, I don't know if he was just enjoying it, if he was just checking out the sites, but he was uh, definitely uh, out there uh, at, uh, what was this, 3XW Wrestling. Uh, Sorg, just Sorg I've, I've got exclusive information on this. Oh, what's happening? Uh, Bernie Sanders is Matanza. <gasps> no. there you go there you go it's we'll true. talk about that it's and true. so much more on the indie mayhem show of course uh this week as well so, so go check that out and support indie wrestling.us it supports the show all right so let's talk about international podcast day international, international podcast, podcast day, day. It's, of course, a big event. We uh, kind of participated partially last year. And actually, we're going to be doing a fun event tomorrow uh, at Work Hard Pittsburgh. We have an evening with PodCamp. We're going to be talking with Buzzy of the Epicast Network. I have a feeling if you like this show... You're going to be a big fan of shows like Drinking Partners and Does This Hold Up? I have some friends of ours that were on Awesome Cast a while ago. Uh, I think they're kind of in the same vein as far as a language filter being turned off and stuff. I had a wonderful Twitter lesson with a fellow named Professor Buzzkill today from that network. It's not huh. what you think. I bet it's not what you think it is. But I definitely mm. recommend that podcast. Uh, go look it up and be surprised. But uh, so again, Is it a doctor that aims to kill Buzz Lightyear? No, no, that's not entirely it. No, then, no, no. Then no. it's not what I think. There's two desks down for me at the co-working space. It's very interesting. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyways, but no, we're going to be doing that. We're going to do a Sorgatron Media uh, kind of hangout uh, after that. Epicast is going to be recording a couple shows. We'll be live streaming here, live.sorgatronmedia.com, uh, live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com. All goes the same place. We should be simulcasting it along with uh, Work Hard Pittsburgh and the Epicast Network. Uh, so look out for that if you're to enjoy your Wednesday night for podcast day. Um, so again, the idea is to talk about podcasting. Obviously, you guys are listening or watching this show, and I don't know if it's the only wrestling show you do uh, or not. I think it, it counts to get varying opinions. Um, I encourage the guys on the show here to listen to other podcasts. Um, no, or he what's, that? what's that? What's mm-hmm. that? He beats us. Uh, no, no, no. You're allowed. No, no, no. You guys are allowed. You guys are completely allowed. I was going to say... 
Like 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 it, like beating us in like a competition sense or like a no 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 with like with his <laughs> no, hands no, no, he no, beats us with his hands <laughs> we have to we we can only listen to uh, uh, Sorgatron approved he looks at our <laughs> podcast feeds once a month guys once a month <laughs> I I have to listen to the ones that aren't approved and then immediately de- delete them from my feed when I know the monthly check is coming. Right. Anyways, um, I like the ones that are, I like the ones that are uh, Bob Backlund approved myself. <laughs> I think Bob Backlund listens to podcasts. I don't know, uh, but anyway, so I'm, so no, he has his own plebeian cast. The world is, is is greater than just this podcast. We hope that you this is one of your favorites. Uh, we we strive for perfection uh, in, in as best as we can here, uh, and and obviously listen so far so f- here. And there's people in our chat room that I'm ignoring as well. I'm trying to. I'm multitasking here. Uh, <laughs> they join us here every Tuesday live at wrestlingmamshow.com, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Um, but I'm kind of wondering, like, what are you guys listening to? What's kind of out there? I know we've mentioned a couple shows over the past, you know, several years that you guys listen to, or hey, this is happening over here. Um, what so? What is the state of wrestling podcasts and in, in, in what you guys are experiencing out there, Mike? I know you listen to a few other ones. I I, I do, Sorg. Um, I listen to it for a lot of the like wrestler hosted ones. It really depends on the guest for right. me, yep. right? Because uh, I know Jericho has interviews a lot of people that I couldn't give two shits about. Um, but like Jericho, as long as you skip the first fifteen minutes, his podcast is pretty good. Because uh, I will say, like, the Jericho, the Austin, the Jim Ross ones, they have a lot of ads. They have a lot of ad, a lot of ad space that they cover at the beginning of their shows. And it kind of takes you out of it a little bit. And I've almost completely stopped listening to Colt Cabana. Oh. Mm. Like, I, I used to listen to Colt all the time, but I think once the, the uh, CM Punk podcast hit, and I just kind of heard that they're both just kind of bitter – bitter people mm. i kind of just fell mm. off with it but um as far as ones not hosted by wrestlers um uh you guys had the chance to meet uh mo lightning who mm-hmm. does the wrestling audio podcast i I, mm. I had the chance but i did not partake i, I mean I, I talked with him directly over a microphone asking dean Quinn can a question but i didn't realize who he was uh at the time which i'm mm. really sad that i missed that opportunity now <laughs> so yeah uh he he works for wizard world and he does like all the uh WWE panels, except for Randy Orton, because he hates Randy Orton, so they don't want to talk to Randy Orton. Uh, <laughs> I heard but, about yeah, this. They, I actually, I, I that, listened to the podcast where he talked about it uh, from yeah. from like a, I, I think was it from Friday night at our Wizard World here or something. But I did listen to that, and it was pretty entertaining. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and they've been doing podcasting for about as long as we have. Uh, I also listened to Smart Wrestling Fan, mm-hmm. and they uh, kind of do a breakdown of each show that's on during the week and they're 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 pretty fun too they actually do not curse so they're more of a family-friendly podcast lame (laughs) well well to each their own to each their own no that's exactly it i I mean i i feel like you know yes we have a little bit of uh uh, language i hope we don't go too too far Mm. over the top here we do have rules we do have rules on what we can can and can't say on this show we've had that discussion yeah because we get beaten because we mm-hmm. get beat, but no, no, that's not the case. That's not the case. Oh, you tricked him. Good one. It's not the case. Um, but no, no. I mean, but I feel like <clears throat> I feel like uh, that's authentic for us. You know, that's the way we talk, and 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 no, it's not going to be for everybody. It's probably why we don't have as huge, huge numbers as some of the other wrestling shows out there, because that is a turnoff for some people. Somehow yeah, we mean, attracted we... some. Somehow we attracted a sixteen-year-old who eventually started announcing at a wrestling company in uh, San Antonio. So that was okay. Um, yeah, you so, guys. You guys you guys listening to the podcast don't know how many racist tirades Sorg is at to cut out of this show. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't I don't want to pull into that Hulk Hogan syndrome. I just don't. <laughs> Sorg is very nice to have cut those out and I very much appreciate that. <laughs> Damon, I told you, just keep saying brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Wink. <laughs> but but no there's a state for that and we do have a very uh uh we try to keep a clean tag on all the rest of the shows we do on the network uh we mm-hmm. don't try to really swear too much on indie mayhem show unless the guest really 
insists on it, which that's okay. Hmm. I mean, if they go, it's like, can I swear? Yeah, you can swear. I mean, we don't encourage it, but uh, but you can completely do that. That's fine. That's fine. So, Bert, note for later, oh. you're completely allowed to go blue for the show. Oh, no. No, that's, not, that's okay. I don't, I don't do that. So why would I? You know, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I, I, you don't know the questions I'm going to ask you later. Oh, so right. that's, 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 <laughs> that's the other case, too. Um, but no, I think that's perfectly fine. There's like tech podcasts to swear. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the, the, the guys I mentioned Epicast later. There's a lot of them on there where it's like comedians and strippers on the show, too. And and they're swearing. And it's not for everybody. What's going to be for. That's why I love about podcasting is we were able to come on LB and me back in the day and random mm-hmm. people that he brought to my house that became friends. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and, and we were allowed to be ourselves because we had that no filter on it there was no we could just be us and the way we talked about wrestling and the way we had fun at you know the parties that we got the idea to do this podcast from when we were we were talking over over beers or whatnot you know and and that's why this is the show where we're allowed to swear and not the other ones but definitely this one um because i I think on this show we we once had a christmas song where the chorus was fuck tna so that's right that's right um but uh, but no, what else do you guys listen to? LB, do you listen to anything else uh, uh, podcast wise? I know you're a lot into the comedy podcasts in general. That is true. That's very true. And I have been trying to listen to uh, We Watch Wrestling, um, which uh, a former mm-hmm. Pete Holmes writer, Matt McCarthy, um, is on that, uh, as well as a few other guys. It's hard. I got to tell you, it's it's real hard. I've tried to listen. It's, and this is, I mean, I'm an advocate for anybody can do a podcast and I've tried to listen to a lot of other wrestling shows, but it's, it's hard to find a good one. Mm-hmm. Um, a, a lot of them are, are, you know, really meandering and, and not all that entertaining. And, and it's just, uh, it, it's for me, it's, it's hard to get into. We watch wrestling is probably the best of those um, because I mean, the, these guys are, are comedians. They are stand up comedians in their, uh, quote unquote day jobs so um so as a result it is it is a pretty good show but Mm -hmm. uh i find that um wrestling podcasts are generally a real tough listen Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of uh issues i find this with the tech podcast where there's a lot of kind of regurgitation of things that you hear and read across the news like these kind of uh, uh uh community lines that that happen. Um, that's those are the kinds of things I get mad about when uh, some we talk about certain things on this show. Because like, wow, that sounds like every dirt sheet I read, and you're just regurgitating that. <laughs> I'm not mentioning any names, uh, you know. And uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> um, I don't nope. know who you're referring to. I don't know. Sorg. I don't know what's going on. Everyone sort just so you don't give it away. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Bert. Bert. Uh, anyways, uh, but no, but uh, and, uh, that's why you know I, I, I try to make sure the conversation tries to steer clear of that, uh, and we don't always succeed in that. Um, but uh, but it's definitely a thing. But, but you know that's the kind of you do have that openness, you do have that filter, and or you know lack of filter, and anybody can go out there and, and, and try it. And, I, and again, I encourage that completely and i love that so many people have spun off things from this show or outside of this show that have nothing to do with pro wrestling like like panel riot or 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 Mm -hmm. anything of the sort or the total divas wrap-up or the total divas wrap-up the hottest (laughs) wrap-up show on sorgatron media (laughs) actually i think our impact one gets more i think it does i think people just want to see actually to be honest the highest one is probably overall the lucha underground uh, partially because the writer for the show retweets it every time. <laughs> so, but then like randomly, oh, yeah, that does help. But yeah. randomly, we got like 400 hits on <clears throat> on that raw wrap up from last year. I think the title "Seth Goes to Hell," Seth Rollins Goes to Hell was a was a <laughs> assistant on that. Um, so, uh, hey, SEO man, uh, use right. use those titles, use those words, man. Use your words, guys. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, who didn't I touch on as far as what you guys are listening to? Eamon, I think you talked uh, about the hit you or, well, or I, but i gotta say so i love wrestling podcasts <laughs> i think i love me some wrestling podcasts um much like kind of what we talked about with what we talk about a lot with re- modern day wrestling uh i think the greatest wrestling podcasts are the ones that are doing something different uh, and aren't going sort of that whole sort of you know norm of what you expect from a wrestling podcast one of my personal favorites and the one that I kind of promote a lot on uh, Facebook and, and all that kind of stuff uh, is a newer podcast called How to Wrestling. 
which I really enjoy. Uh, it's uh, created by one of the guys that uh, also hosts the Attitude Era podcast, which obviously is based around covering stuff from the Attitude Era. They did this spinoff, uh, uh, Kevin Madden, uh, who uh, is doing this podcast with his girlfriend, Joanna Graham, who is sort of a newer wrestling fan, maybe about a year or so in. And the, basically the concept is sort of teaching her and teaching people, you know, uh, how to get into wrestling, certain aspects of wrestling. Uh, they break it down each episode with like, uh, they did how to John Cena, how to uh, Hulk Hogan, how to Brock Lesnar. Uh, they've done, uh, I think, how to pay-per-views, you know, different aspects of wrestling. And it makes for a really fun sort of conversation. It's, it's very engaging because they, they do a great job of engaging their audience by taking like Twitter comments and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, it's really fun. I think Lunchbox, you would really like it too, because it is one of those, like, like you mentioned, pared down ones Mm -hmm. that aren't just like rambling and, and like the unpreparedness, you could say, Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's definitely really good in that aspect. So yeah, I, I endorse that wholeheartedly. It's always been a really fun list. Uh, it was how to, how to wrestling. Yep. How to wrestling. Uh, I know they're on Twitter at how to wrestling. Uh, yeah, they're, they're awesome. And I think, like I said, Podcasts that are trying something different. I like podcasts that have like a concept like that, where uh, they cover like only spe- maybe they cover a specific time frame in wrestling, or they cover you know a certain aspect of pro wrestling or something along those lines. I really enjoy those kind of more than just sort of you know like you like kind of like Lunchbox mentioned like the rambling kind of traditional <laughs> like wrestling podcast. But yeah, I, I think it's awesome that you kind of get <clears throat> to experience the Attitude Era since you weren't alive for a lot of it yeah and it's very i I, they're they're very descriptive as well so it's very much it's not like you get lost in the sense you know uh Mm -hmm. they 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 do a great job of that and yeah uh and and they seem very fair and balanced you know they 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 aren't you know the negative kind of you know way you expect wrestling podcasters to be but you know they they they're very fair and balanced and i really enjoy it yeah because i feel like if you if you just sat down and watched some old raws like you personally, I mean, because I, mm-hmm. I know your your sensibilities. If you just sat down and watched old Raws, you would fucking hate it. <laughs> but, to have like a, but to have like a companion piece for it to kind of put it in perspective a little bit, I think I think that's a really cool thing that like it allows newer viewers of wrestling to do. Yeah, definitely. Awesome, awesome. Uh, Bert, what about you? What are you listening to? Uh, I listen to a lot of the different ones. That's why I love podcasting. I listen to Austin. I listen to Jericho. JR and some of the other ones that I, I, I try to. It's, it's, it's a tough crunch because for me, it's a busman's holiday because the radio I mentioned earlier that I work in is talk radio. Mm-hmm. I've done talk radio since 1999, mostly behind the scenes. And so I know of you know how real radio works and how advertisers and the whole you know, shebang plays into it. That's why I love podcasting because podcasting, even still 10, 12 years since its inception, is really very Wild West and it's very... It's very new. It's very fresh. It's very. It's still very raw, and people are still trying to find the ways to you know master it. And you've done a great job with 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 this. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, I know monetization is sort of the next big hurdle of it. But I mean, in terms of the selection that's out there, you know, as, as with any social media, content is king. You know, it's 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 something for everyone. Everybody in this panel is answering something different when you ask them what they listen to, and it all it's all suited to their taste. It's all tailored to their taste. So. And it's also on demand too, so that's why I love the idea that I can go online pretty much any time I want to, any day, and listen to something that will legitimately entertain me rather than what's you know being fed to me by by the radio stations. And I think that's uh, that's the beauty of podcasting in, in general. Uh, and in terms of what I listen to, yeah, I think a lot of times it does involve a guest. If I if you know I, I, the Jericho ones, you know, if it's a guest I'm interested, in, I listen to the Mark Henry one, I listen to the New Day one, you know, it's very very interesting ones because. It, those guys come at it from a wrestler's perspective, and I love wrestlers talking shop with wrestlers. I, I absolutely love that. Um, you know, and, and when the writers talk, and when other people talk, when it's normal pundits like you and I, that's all well and good too. But you know, it's to have a different perspective with the, with the wrestlers. I think it's just, it is phenomenal. That's right, and it's been interesting. It's been interesting how we developed that. We've gone from just like dudes that like wrestling to like you know, Eamon here works in indie right. wrestling. You right. work in wrestling. I work on the production side, so we right. have. I, I'm not going to say we know what wrestling's like, you know, and and, and, and everything, but we do have some insight right. at this point. We know both sides of the coin. Exactly. Uh, Mike worked for WWE in a right. capacity up there, you know. I mean, yeah. that's 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 like you know, like yeah. like we've gone from 
and you we're know, all fans. Right, right. We're all fans. We all watch the show when we can, mm-hmm. and 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 the majority of us have been involved with it mm-hmm. in some capacity. So I mean, I think that's that gives us you know added depth. And that's what with anything. Like if we have you know uh, you know LB over here is doing panel riot as a comic book fan, right? You know, and and you know, a long time insight, but he's got insight. You know, it's not just like. Man, Marvel really sucks right now. You know, you're you're actually right. like digging into the topic, right? <laughs> well, I, I, I try not to. I try not to say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you give a reason, and that, that's something I, I've had discussions with people like on this show and other ones. Is like, you know, hey, when we get into something, and if it's something that you're not into, say no, that sucks. It's like great, and yeah. you know, uh, that's not. A, it's give, not. A, yeah, tell give, me why. Give an get alternative. Into, yeah, yeah. I mean, you have an opinion, and the, <clears> and the way we do these shows is. A discussion and opinion about about things and hopefully a deep one and i've really like some nights we we get done with the show and i'm like uh you know i mean i mean you say to me recently it's like wow that was a really good discussion you know um and yeah. and, and i'm hoping it enlightens other people i know about about the the wonderfulness of, of professional wrestling it seems goofy in the long run you know but uh but but it seems to be working because you guys are out there uh listening to this kind of thing and listening to these other shows and uh and, and and it's a great community, you know, that's kind of built out of this. So, as biggest takeaway, one, hey, go start a podcast for one thing, or yep. support the podcast that you're into if you don't want to get behind a microphone, or or just just share, you know, share what ones you guys are listening to, share what ones, um, you know, you think other people like, and communicate with the people. Um, we've had a pretty good discussion on uh. The power hour, and I think I stretched it into uh, basic ergonomics as well about being a fan out loud. Uh, let the people know, especially if it's not you know, even those guys that the we watch wrestling podcasts. Yeah, they're comedians, but it's not like they probably have millions and millions and millions of of of, of listeners. So any feedback you give even them is, I'm sure, very appreciated. You know, especially if they're in an unforgiving uh, <clears throat> profession like comedy. You know, yeah. um, any positivity to that. Is going to go a long way. Amen. It's going to go a longer way to somebody doing something like this, even as Kevin Smith doing his podcast. You know, to be quite honest, mm-hmm. than um, uh, you know somebody who's on your radio, um, because just that kind of level of scale. Does, does that seem accurate as somebody right. who's in the wrestling, or I'm sorry, in the radio business? Yeah, I, mean, I think I think it, you know, radio. Yes, in, in in the macro, it's built it's built on listeners, it's built on aggregates, it's built on sponsorship income. And, you know, if, if nobody listens to my show, if I'm a radio talk show host and, and nobody listens to my show on, on Tuesday, I still get paid. Mm-hmm. It's my job. I still walk away. You know, I, I still walk away. Yeah, it wasn't the best day, but you know what? I'm going to come back tomorrow and, and, and hit it again and see if the callers are there and see if anything else happens. But, you know, for, for a podcaster, for a nascent podcaster who's just starting out, mm-hmm. you know, that could be a make or break. Mm-hmm. That could be a, a confidence killer. If you're there and no one's there, you, know, you start and, you start to think, why am I doing this? And we see the uh, the you know the viewers go away, and you do have those advertisers line up. It's a little more immediate of a reaction, right? Exactly. So, so it's it's a little more to that. It's not a uh, it's out there. Everybody can turn on their car, and just by that mm. fact, you know, it, it, that's a whole other discussion about right. advertising and podcasts. Yep. That's why we have Patreon and people that give us pizza. Thank you so much, Slice on Broadway. Indeed. Uh, which Good actually stuff. is the next promotion that i'm supposed to talk about but in the meantime we'll talk about it in a second uh but uh gars is in the chat room of course uh he's got some thoughts first of all he wants to start a petition on more strippers uh on this show i guess uh so there's that all we right do have fine a- garza there oh, he goes. He, oh, he meant like women strippers. I, right. I, I hope so. I don't know. He doesn't determine which he, did, way. he didn't specify. I mean, either way, we can just get Doomy DeMarco down here, and I'm sure if we throw him a couple bucks and buy him a case of beer, anything could happen. Uh, Sork, we wouldn't have to do either of those things. He would teabag you as soon as he walked in the door. He didn't. He was over for wings a, uh, about a month ago, and uh, I, there was not as much nudity as I thought was going to happen. So Was it a Destination America watch party, Sork? Oh, no. <laughs> no it wasn't but funny you say that since somebody <laughs> else was having wins there too so um anyways um uh, uh i don't know where <laughs> slice to go. on broadway uh, slice, slice on broadway. broadway no no there's karma comments that's where i was going with this mm-hmm. uh no garza is saying uh wrestling observer podcast he watches everyone and we mm-hmm. watch wrestling so- sometimes and jr sucks yeah jr just seems <laughs> so freaking bitter uh yeah. it, it just it just it, it just turns me off from the whole idea and i'm a huge fan of jr not so much anymore he did like a stand-up night evening with jr thing i wonder how that goes because he was doing that oh, kind wow. of 
Around I'm sure he goes very slow and gets through all of his jokes you know, <laughs> at, at a reasonable pace. Comedy spot monkeys. Anyways, uh, <laughs> but our friends from Slice on Broadway supporting the show, uh, sh- supporting Pittsburgh independent podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza from right up the way here in Beachview uh, in this great area of Pittsburgh. Um, but anyways, no, check out my sliceonbroadway.com. Uh, there are friends. There's Rico right on the front page there if you're on the video version. Um, it, it's, it, it's great stuff. It's, 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 it's not like that thing you know they uh, uh, unfroze the crust at Pizza Hut and you get this kind of a weird concoction with hot dogs in the crust or what the heck they're doing these days. This is for real pizza, and it's for real good pizza. I recommend their gourmets. And I'm not, I'm a simpleton when it comes to pizza. I mean, it's mm-hmm. not the right word. But I want my pepperoni. I want my mushroom. Nothing too fancy. But here I'm getting goat cheese on the pizza. I'm getting spinach on the pizza. I freaking hate spinach, man. But I'm getting that on the pizza because it's freaking good and now I'm getting hungry again. I hope there's some pizza left over there. Bert, did you eat all the rest of it? I only had one slice so far. So, so far. far. Uh, but we'll see how that changes here over the over the <laughs> course of the evening. Uh, but go check them out. SliceOnBroadway.com. PGH underscore Slice on Twitter. Or looking for Slice on Broadway on Facebook or Instagram. Let them know you heard about them on the Wrestling Mayhem show. And so they'll keep sending us pizzas and keep being happy about that. Uh, and I know, I know there's people... Put setting up rings in Austin, Texas that are down with Slice on Broadway from what I'm told through the grapevine. And yes, uh, that is a beautiful, beautiful thing. I hope they all visit Pittsburgh sooner or later and get to check it out for themselves. So go check them out. Support the show. Support our supporters of the show. And support podcasting for International Podcast Day. International, International Podcast, Podcast Day. Day. Here's what happened last week. International Podcast Day. Here's what happened last week on Sorgatron Media as we found out who has the delay on Google Hangout tonight. That's why somebody found it in a Spanish mall's basement. No, I would not pull over for Mr. Needle Nose. All right? Mr. Needle Nose can suck it. I am not pulling over for a fictional blue cartoon hedgehog. But, but he's super fast. I don't care. Fans like it. I really enjoy, you know, painting my face, and I, uh, I started doing that as Inspire a lot. And um, when Ultimate Warrior died as a kid, like hey, that's the colorful guy. Like obviously you're gonna look at him and, and just. So I started painting my face once he died as like my tribute to him. The Fire Seven Inch Display Wi-Fi, a gigabyte. By the way, it's fifty dollars, and by the way, it comes in a six pack. Uh, if other people are looking to buy this and want to go in on a six pack, let me know. I think my Christmas shopping has been taken care of here. Who's a Dana Brooks fanatic out of you guys? Guilty. What? <laughs> what? She talks through her nose. A high Linux Fest. It was originally uh, a group of Linux user groups or several Linux user groups in Ohio said, well, hey, why don't we get together and have a conference? So they all sort of converged on Columbus. Uh, at the uh, Ohio State campus. We are back, and uh, thank you, everybody, checking all that stuff out. And not in there, but also Sawtooth Willie he seems to have emerged back from the underground. Please uh, uh, go look him up on uh, YouTube and Facebook new pages, so like and subscribe to those, and don't miss an episode. And watch all, I think we're up to 24 episodes of that. Um, you can Chromecast them like I was the last week uh, showing somebody. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Go check it out. So with at that point, let's do the big question. Um, man, my transitions are tough tonight. I'm sorry. I'm excited about International <laughs> Podcast Day. So let's head over to Papa Lunchbox <laughs> with this week's big question. We've missed you. Oh, thanks, guys. Uh... I do have a big question this week, mm-hmm. uh, and this is kind of a it's a, it's a personal issue for me, um, and I, I I'm I've been having a problem lately uh, with wrestling, and um, I'm I'm I think I think I'm burnt out. I think I'm I'm tired. I, I tried really hard to watch Raw last night. I tried to watch uh, watch a lot of it, and I just couldn't. I ended up uh, turning it off, turning it back on, turning it off again, and and you know I I just uh, watched kind of clips later on, and and you know I try to I try to keep up with with NXT, which is you know wonderful, and and um, 
you know, uh, uh, try to get caught up on Lucha Underground and everything, but I'm just, it's, there's, it's just so much. And it, I think, I think, I think I'm tired and I think I'm burnt out. And, and so this week's big question, I'm looking for advice. It doesn't have to be tailored specifically to me. It, it can be to a, um, a, a, an unnamed third party. Let's say you have a friend who is tired and he's burnt out on wrestling and he, but he, but he doesn't want to give it up. He doesn't want to stop watching wrestling. He wants to get back in. He wants something to hook him, to grab him by the throat. Like things used to, he's an old man who just wants to love wrestling again. How would you make that old man love wrestling again? What would you recommend to that old man? To love wrestling again. <laughs> I have no answer. I clearly have no answer this week. <laughs> All right, so he's out on that. For that third person, for that for that person, right. then you would. Uh, well, you know, okay. So actually, I think I think to look at yours, and we talked about this on the show a bit, but uh, I think we've seen this uh, actually culminate this sort of situation of somebody getting burnt out and then they disappear, but then they found something, right? I, I think Chachi's a good example of this. He's somebody that was really burnt out and didn't care about wrestling anymore. And he's off show for a bit. Right. And then he discovered NXT, which even he was, he's been doing these indie shows with me since, since the beginning of well, actually late 2011. Okay. And the whole time he's just like, yeah, that's great and all, but whatever indie wrestling. Right. Um, and we've had this discussion a lot. I mean, he enjoys being there. He enjoys, you know, being around the guys and being a part of it, but he's not really sold on wrestling or just really kind of down on it in general. Um, and then NXT happened, and it seems to have revived his interest in general. And then New Japan's Kingdom, uh, Wrestle Kingdom Nine happened, and it 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 livened him up. And now he's back. You know, I mean, he's he has the things that he watches, and and it's great. You know, I think uh, for a lot of people, Lucha Underground has done that to them. Um, and I know you. I don't know if you're just are you just down in general. Or are you checking out these sorts of things and not getting excited about it? I'm open to suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I think the idea is um, you need to find what is your muse. Obviously, yep. we all watch WWE because uh, I'm more out of habit than anything because we're right. longtime fans. Right. I watch Monday Night. Uh, one, I mean, we do a podcast. I want to be interactive with people, and that's where people congregate that are wrestling fans right now. It's the biggest place to be on Twitter is Monday Night. And to me, I think it's still important in my soul to watch Monday night live, you know? Um, I mean, I'm to the point we've discussed this before. I, the only thing I still fib with, uh, in the legalities of watching is Monday night raw because I want to watch it live and it's not worth it to me to pay $80 to a cable company to have that, that right. Right. Um, but I pay for Hulu and I could easily watch that, that 90 minute version the next day without commercials because I paid the extra four bucks for that. Um, but nice. I still have to watch it Monday night with the world. Right. Even being on the West Coast and watching it uh, three hours later drove me insane. Okay. I don't know how you guys do it. <laughs> I have no idea how you guys do it out there. Um, uh, that's on the list of reasons I won't move to California. Uh, but anyways, you know, it's, it's, it's so I think if you want to stay in touch with with WWE in general, like just watch the This Week in Wrestling show. Um, I mean, it's it's, it's on WWE Network, but I'm sure it's like online somewhere too because mm -hmm. it's really just kind of a clip show of the week. Uh, just to kind of see what's going on if you'd like or even watch like Main Event or something on Hulu. Um, and that that will catch you up with everything important and maybe you'll you'll enjoy that a little bit more if you want to keep that, if you want to keep WWE in your life, <laughs> right? Um, but I think you really do need to, uh, if you want to stick with it, find your muse. Find that Lucha Underground or Wrestle Kingdom, New Japan thing or NXT, the thing that does get you excited, you know, that rejuvenates you. And then eventually you come back around as that trend maybe spreads back around to wrestling or you just come around in general. That's kind of a wide advice point does that make sense mm -hmm. okay i i would say with with the best advice i would possibly give uh is we talk about it a lot on the show that wrestling is very multifaceted there's a lot of different styles there's a lot of different approaches and there's not a necessarily right or wrong way to do wrestling 
uh, what I would suggest to that person who is who is burnt out uh, would be take time and sit down and and maybe I would say make a list of what you love about wrestling. Right. Is it the high flying athleticism? Is it you know uh, you know storytelling? Is it you know uh, in in the case of maybe like WWE, is it like big name stars? Is it pageantry? Is it that kind of aspect? Uh, I would do that. And if it's multiple things, then then that that works as well. But take what you love about wrestling, maybe even rank it in a sense, and find the thing that gravitates to what you want. Uh, if you like the more high athletic, you know, uh, crazy flip and and all that kind of stuff, watch like a PWG or a Ring of Honor. If you want uh, deep storytelling, watch the Lucha Underground. You know, if you you know, like I guess it depend. It all depends on what you want. Uh, there, we live in. An, I think the reason people get burnt out nowadays isn't because necessarily a bad wrestling is because there's so much wrestling, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and there's yep. so much wrestling to the point where you. It's hard to even. You know, if you're watching, however many hours of professional wrestling in a given amount of time, you can. I mean, you can find some good stuff, but. You also have to sit through a lot of stuff that you either don't aren't aren't passionately you know in love with or is bad to you, you know. So the more you can refine your watching to the stuff that you truly love, I would say the better. I like that. All right. Right. All right. Um. So LB, like like any relationship, relationship with wrestling can sometimes need some freshening up. I would say maybe go to an old reliable, like find a pay-per-view that you know you love implicitly, like WrestleMania 17. You set aside a three-hour block, you get yourself a good meal, you sit down, maybe watch it with a lady friend, maybe watch it with a dude friend who loves wrestling as much as you do or did before you got burned out. And you watch the pay-per-view together, and you talk, and you discuss, and maybe imbibe a few alcoholic beverages, and you just get back to the roots. Hmm. That's what I would do. Because hmm. trust me, with all the with all the product I had to watch uh, when I worked there, because we had to watch God so much WCW Saturday Night. Uh, <laughs> oh you no! Out on, oh. You can get burned out on it really quick. Mm-hmm. So I would come back and every now and then I'd pop in like mm, SummerSlam 2002 mm-hmm. or something like that. Something that I know is really pretty decent from start to finish or, you know, just something that it's like it brings back all the good memories. And then it can like you can draw parallels to stuff that's going on now, too. Nice. So, nice. yeah. Well, you, Bert. Um, I think for for me, you know, it's it's. Uh, it's sort of a combination of what everybody said so far. You know, find find something you like about Raw, and and try to glom up to that as much as possible. For me, it's it, it's you know, as I said to you, sort of the, the new day. It, it just you know, I watch for the most part. I watched last night in its entirety, just like so be ready for tonight, and just because I haven't done it in a while. But um, you know, watch something that you know, just something that grabs you. Find one thing that grabs you. You don't feel compelled to watch the whole show because you know my eyes would boil over if that if that was the case. And I've cut back drastically on the wrestling I watch. I used to watch, you know, all the different televised hours of WWE. Mm-hmm. You know, now it's just literally pay per views and maybe a quarter of Raw, just because that's all I can really take. There are other things going on in my life. There are other things going on in the world, um, and, and I try to catch the other things when I can just to keep up on it. But you know, maybe just scale back in general because it'll always be there. The wrestling will always be there, whether or not you watch or not. It will always be there, and, and for the most part, I don't think it, it, it takes that long to catch up. You know, find any online reviewer that you you know you glom onto that you like to to read, and you can catch up that way on your own time. And if you see something that oh hey this sounds like it might be interesting, guess what? It's online. Chances are, go back and watch it, and, and then find it that way, and, and make the most use of your time. You know, maximize your minutes. Make the most use of. Uh, of what you can and maybe find one thing to watch regularly just for the sake, as, as you said earlier, Sorg, that you feel compelled to watch. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'll still feel compelled to watch Raw because what if I miss something? 
And then, you know, you realize three hours later, okay, I didn't. But, you know, it, at least it was there. At least the feeling was there that, yes, I got to watch it. And, you know, sometimes it's great. Sometimes it's, you know, bad. But either way, you watched it. And you can move on. So wow. that's where I am on it. All right. We got some from the chat room as well. Uh, Garza is saying, uh, LB, the answer is give up WWE's 100 plus hours of TV and just enjoy Lucha Underground. Uh, if that fails, uh, Pro Wrestling Gorilla is once a month. Uh, Cars uh, puts on. What you do is you buy enough Pro Wrestling Gorilla to watch an hour at a time between now and the time Lucha Underground comes back on TV. I think there's a trend here. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure. So, um, so, so, how are you feeling, LB? I think these are all uh, excellent uh, pieces of advice, and uh, I'm excited to try out these different techniques. There you go. Hope you report. I think they all they all make a lot of sense, and I'm hoping that something will click. Because I do, in my heart, I love professional wrestling, but it just, it's just I just need I don't know I need something mm-hmm. I need something, and we're gonna figure out what it is. And uh, uh, yeah. Well, uh, Awesome Kong's gonna be on Bound for Glory. Shit. <laughs> 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 well there's that there's that as well Do we, are we giving away a dvd uh for this big question oh yeah we because are mike we are may get it mike may get it okay <laughs> okay well I'll, I'll just send that over actually uh if you want to respond to us on twitter or email us but i'd like you guys to respond on twitter sh- share with the hashtag wms big question and uh you'll be in the running to win actually uh volume one ah the picture went away volume one of uh Rise of the Peacock, the best of Dalton Castle. Oh. He's he's the hot thing in uh, R W. I'm oh, geez, which one? Sure. Ring of Honor. <laughs> yeah, sure. sure. R W A. We'll Bring him. him over. Bring him on we'll over to R W A. You know. <laughs> um. But uh. But but no. He's a uh, best of him in, in, in the I W C. Um. And and Volume One actually includes him with uh Cole Cabana, Sammy Callahan, who's now uh. uh Crow. Solomon Crow. Solomon Crow. Solomon Thank Crow. you. Uh, there's even the one where he's in a pillow fight with Justin Plummer. Um, <laughs> that sounds amazing. That sounds amazing. It matches with Ray Rowe, Chuck Taylor that involved the Swamp Monster, and of course uh, his uh, big title, I think it was the title match against uh, 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 one John McChesney at Winner Takes All the One Year, uh, uh, courtesy of Indie Wrestling dot us so please let us know and help out and there's some more comments on, in here um also let's see uh, uh uh chikara you should watch some chikara from from cars um and uh da, 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 and they're just going in about chikara um but anyways thank you for that uh from the chat room as well live at wrestling mayhem so uh also you know what you should wear more shirts lb i should i usually I, okay you should wear more shirts. How many? Is two not enough? Well, we have uh, three wonderful <laughs> designs over at uh, ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS you can pick up. Uh, I know you have the property of Mayhem one. And you should complete, I do. And you should definitely complete the collection, Good Times at Wrestling Mayhem Show, and the logo as well. And uh, while you're there, uh, what you mean, what you'll, uh, think back to the good old days and pick, pick up some Macho Man Randy Savage, some Stone Cold Steve Austin, uh, and, 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 and check out like Friends of the Shows, you know? I mean, I mean, I mean you were a big fan when uh, 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 you know, Eric Young was on the show. He has t-shirts on here, right? Um, you know, and all kinds of uh, fun stuff. ProWrestlingTees.com supporting indie wrestling uh supporting wrestling in general some really good stuff over there we actually talked with the head printer uh over on indie mayhem show a uh, few weeks ago so go check that out a little bit about how they're working and how they're helping and and how it's a, just a great great thing uh to support pro wrestlers pro wrestling and uh and taking uh, the, the the wwe middleman the wwe and tna middleman out of the equation you can go get a papa shango shirt <laughs> Papa Shango. Yeah, I'm kind of down with that. Or uh, Godfather. Godfather, strangely on the same page as Papa Shango. I'm not wow. entirely sure. Oh, Why? okay. But, Why? sir, can we get a Kama Mustafa shirt? Hold on. Is there one? He was the here? Supreme Fighting Papa Machine. Shango, Shango. There's, <laughs> exactly. there's the Ho Train, mostly Ho Train and Papa Shango on this guy. Uh, wow. Who is it? Man, he looks a little bit like the Godfather. What is that about? Huh? 
Ah, uh, so uh, speaking of <laughs> speaking of some that are, some things that are mystical and potentially undead, let's talk about TNA's Bound for Glory this weekend. Um, so, man, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Gar is hating me right now in the chat room. Uh, all right, all right. Now, I don't want to. I my my. I don't want this to be a hate fest. I don't. I don't want TNA to go away. I hope they're not going away. We have friends that work with TNA. Um, mm-hmm. but they're having a pay-per-view that I didn't know about this weekend. This is true. Okay. Um, and it's supposedly the biggest pay-per-view of the year. Right. Uh, now, now I want to point out last year was also when they did the awkward, can I say awkward? It was good, but awkward. Um, it was okay. Uh, Japanese, <laughs> uh, they had, they did the Japanese bound for glory. Right. That this was is true where they recorded it several days in advance. Okay. Um, okay. At least this one's going to be live. Okay. Um, it's it's really it's it might be the last TNA pay per view ever. Which I well, feel like we were true. saying about a year ago, of course. Right. Yeah, but th- this time, like, I'm I'm serious about it because they haven't taped anything for After Bound for Glory. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be like the main event. You got Ethan Carter versus Drew Galloway, and Spoiler alert, they're probably going to announce Jeff Hardy as a special referee. Which, uh, I mean, I don't like special referees in general. But if you put Jeff Hardy in a referee outfit, he's probably just going to rip it up and make it into some sort of crappy art design. Um, also, I th- they're having this bound for gold match or something like that. They're having one of their uh, little gauntlet Royal Rumble types. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was very funny that um, Eamon did not even recognize one of the people that was on the uh, the poster for it. The, gu- the guy with I the stogie. No the guy with the stogie, right? Yep. Wow. Apparently yeah. that's Jay Bradley, who yeah. I didn't know was huh. still employed with the company. But there's there's a lot of people like that who we didn't know are still employed with the company. Um, but yeah, we also got, as I alluded to earlier, Gail Kim versus Awesome Kong for the knockout title, which, I mean, sure, that'll be fun. But I, I don't know if that's really the best matchup. And uh, apparently, I didn't know this, but uh, seeing sort of bring it up on the page, the wolves are challenging Trevor Lee and Brian. The wolves and Trevor Lee and Brian Myers are having a tag title match hmm. when kicked out of the company. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, I mean, your your audio is. Oh, uh, Global Force was kicked out of the company, yet those guys are allowed to have a tag team championship match. Ah, pro wrestling. Yep. No, 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 Sorg. no, no, Sorg. Pro wrestling is saying that um, James Storm suddenly made up with the revolution and they're having a match. They literally had uh, an entire angle where the where those guys specifically were kicked out of the company. Mm-hmm. Um, and and Tiger Uno, we're gonna have an Ultimate X match because why not? And uh, it's against three question mark men. I can only hope. Yeah, they have not announced who T. Uno is facing at Bound for Glory. <clears throat> I'm assuming we won't get those answers tomorrow night on Impact. So uh, stay tuned for who that might be. And God willing, DJ Z wins the X Division title. Everyone's going to be Donald Trump. They're finally going to pay off that uh, that promo package or whatever where T. Uno <laughs> called them out. For no reason. Sorg, uh, Eamon, Eamon, do you think they can turn Mandrews into Donald Trump? Sure, why not? <laughs> we'll call him Mark. No, no, I can't think of a pun name. This is stupid. Uh, Don <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Don Drews. But yeah, it's, there's no feuds going into any of this and like – they, they, I didn't know about the tag title match either. Like, mm-hmm. like they don't nothing. Yeah, it's. Uh, 
I want to point out that Eamon, so yeah. so Mike has gotten to the point with TNA where he just like turns into guttural sounds right. as he as you as you there, heard. There are no words. There's, there's no words, and I love that Eamon has kind of I don't want to say sunk to that level, but just like have been. Dropped to that level. It's the via, TNA effect. It's the TNA like a, effect. It's, it's like a robot short circuiting. Like it's really that bad. <laughs> and by the way, and by the way, <laughs> meanwhile in the chat room, our friend uh, Antonio Garza uh, is saying so much hate in this show. Hashtag positivity. <laughs> okay, whatever. Uh, the power <laughs> of positivity. Ethan Carter is still really, really good. Yes, right. He's really good now. With this Drew, Galloway, Drew Galloway's really good too. Drew Galloway's a great wrestler. He just hasn't been feuding with Ethan Carter at all. But whatever. Um, this this just feels like a last show. Like it, it feels like a last show. It feels like this is the last thing we're doing. This is the I, last I thing we're presenting to an audience. I think it's kind of weird that they decided to have Bound for Glory in North Carolina. And neither uh-huh. Hardy is booked for the show. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Like, like right. they, they legitimately decided to have Bound for Glory because they brought back the Hardys. And then Jeff broke his leg. And Matt is Matt and cannot be trusted on for anything. If Matt Hardy wins the Ultimate X, uh, the X Division title, I'm going to be very upset. Just in general. And, and there's also like I think Bobby Roode's supposed to have a King of the Mountain title match. I uh, I don't even know what the because TNA has been building this invasion storyline that ended a week ago that probably should have ended at the pay per view because they were actually doing an okay job of building that storyline. Not great. There are a lot of flaws, obviously, but they were doing an okay job of building it. But then. Once they finished the uh, the uh, invasion, they were like, oh, shit, we have our WrestleMania in two weeks. We <laughs> should probably figure that out. And, of course, they said that, you know, a month and a half ago when this was filmed. So it's going to be interesting. I, I think next week on Destination America is even going to be more interesting because they have nothing filmed for it. And they have no scheduled tapings. Wow. So you think it's going to be like uh, highlight shows or something in the meantime? I think it's going to be matches they tape for explosions strung into a show, which is not going to be pleasant. Well, there you go. It's you basically know, like, going to be the equivalent of if, 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 if the whole show was just the beatdown clan <laughs> <laughs> and people who, watch TNA this, people who watch TNA this year would get that reference. Um, yeah, it's basically just going to be that. They well, just filmed I mean, the whole show with the beatdown clan and they're like, whoops, we can't use it. Amen, amen. Hernandez officially got fired from Lucha Underground this past week. Yes, he did. So TNA can run that as new footage. <laughs> <laughs> they technically can, I think, right now. And no one has seen it before. So it might be interesting. Welcome to but the Hernandez again, TNA MVP, special. <laughs> Kenny King. And who was the other member of the Beatdown Clan? I don't even Oh, Hernandez. Oh, shit. Gonna, and her yeah, and homicide, does. and homicide, or uh, I don't even remember who the other guy was. But none of them are in <laughs> TNA anymore. So Samoa Joe? No, <laughs> well, Samoa, no Samoa Joe was in the Beatdown Clan, right? But right. then he's like, "Oh wait, there's Florida. That's a whole thing." So I'm gonna go fight Finn Balor now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, you, you know, as I've I've seen a couple final shows, and you're right, it does feel sort of like that. But the final shows that I've seen were had a lot more build. Resolution Six now available on IndieWrestling.us. Mm-hmm. Um, I just hope this final episode of TNA has Rockstar Spud parallel parking a car outside the Impact Zone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, and yes, I picked Rockstar Spud. Because he's British and he's not used to parallel parking on this side of the street. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> well, from that to other other things, uh, Ring of Honor was in the area in California, PA, about an hour out from Pittsburgh here. Uh, because everybody decided to have a show within two weeks in, <laughs> in professional wrestling in the Pittsburgh area. 
So there you go. Uh, we talked about last week the little uh, RWA versus uh, TNA uh, rivalry that happened five minutes down the road from each other uh, <laughs> at great length. And uh, easily, uh, Ring of Honor uh, definitely outdrew everybody else. Uh, but uh, we, with I think we estimate about 600 people uh, with, with this. Uh, so, you know, not like mind-bending in a 6,000-seat auditorium. Uh, but uh, but again, it's comparable to what we've seen in other places uh, when it comes to Ring of Honor. They they uh, you know they draw around a thousand people and they're okay, I guess. Hmm. Uh, but but either way, what <laughs> you said, I guess. I guess yeah. I don't know. I well, I think I also they don't. I mean, I also also look at shows like that where um, they're not making the money off the of tickets uh, necessarily. They have video on demand DVD releases and they have TV money. So yeah. I, I don't <clears> think your attendance. Um, is the main money draw at that point? You know, it's another show that somebody's paying the on demand. You know, the, the ten bucks a month for on demand, on demand yeah. or whatever, or buying that online or buying the DVD. Like, there's a lot of revenue streams going on versus, like, say, an indie promotion where it is very dependent on the people that get in, in, into those seats because that's mostly what's paying for something. Um, in in my understanding of independent pro wrestling uh, finances, um, that maybe is incomplete. But anyways, but. Uh, but uh, a really good show. Uh, you can always count on Ring of Honor as being a. I have not been watching the TV. I'm not. I, I didn't even like know the results from the pay per view the weekend before. I didn't know that we had new tag team champions. But it's nice to. Uh, it's a show that you can go to, enjoy, and just that's it. You know, um, regardless if you know who everybody is in there, and you know, for us, like we know a lot of guys from the indies or yep. have seen over the years or something like that, uh, and it was really fun. Uh, Matt Carlin's was there. He wanted to see the Young Bucks. There was only one Buck there uh, because the other one um, was was involved with his, his his wife going into labor early. So best wishes. To, I hope everything worked out there. Uh, I hadn't seen any reports afterwards necessarily, and uh, and and Chachi came. We talked about earlier about his resurgence into enjoying professional wrestling. And this was his first time watching Ring of Honor. Not live, watching Ring of Honor. And <laughs> that was really interesting. Again, and it, it, with a lot of people he was familiar with, just from working with IWC and RWA. You know, right. um, I mean, I mean, just between Ray Rowe being there, Cedric Alexander that was at on uh, uh, Super Indie earlier. Was he, wait, was he on the show? Like, Cedric Alexander wasn't even on the show, was he? Um but still, uh, and, and other guys, Don Castle wasn't there either. But um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of familiar faces. Uh, so it was really interesting to see that. Um, and I think it's you know we talk about on Indie Mayhem show a lot about shows that you go to and do the storylines make sense because you talk about indie show a lot of people maybe just showed up to that indie show and having these long storylines drawn out don't work you know don't necessarily work very well and while they were touching base on a lot of ongoing storylines on this it's not it wasn't a TV taping it was basically a video on demand DVD one they will have recaps I'm sure on the live segment on on, on ROH TV um, but it's a perfect example of it's a genuine house show more or less but it matters regardless mm -hmm. and i think that's what wwe fails at is making those house shows feel like they matter to anything there's no cameras out there for one thing uh when you go to a wwe house show so so that kind of kills it but crowds always into it it was really good i was really disappointed that you didn't see a lot of students in those seats it was basically the roh fans that mm -hmm. you were going to see anyways um, in fact, there were other events happening there. And by the way, California University, you suck for a place <laughs> <laughs> to have venues. Okay, I'm getting that out there. Um, that that we got stuck, in, literally stuck in the parking garage because the gate was broken and nobody would respond. And for a good wow. 45 minutes, I'd say. Uh, and that you have an event, a 6,000 seat arena, and you tell everybody, you, you put signs up for everybody to park in one parking garage that wasn't even half full. And yet everybody was standing in line for the one meter to check out their parking ticket. Just mm. abysmal. Please, a Ring of Honor, do not have a show there again. <laughs> Anybody else thinking about having a show there again? Please don't have a show there again. Okay? Um, it's not built for you if you actually want people to come to it. Okay. Plus, it's in the middle. So, of so TNA nowhere. can yep. run one there and then. Ring of uh, yeah, TNA's attendance will not be affected by having it in California University. <laughs> um, but uh, but I mean that's just my general thoughts on that. But no, a lot of fun. It was good. It was a good night of the, with the guys, and um and and, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, but, uh, Ring so, of are, yeah. Can I can I can I have a discussion with you about ROH house shows? Hmm. 
and their importance. I wouldn't call them house shows, but like because they're always they're a DVD. There's always a DVD recording of them, so there's there's significance and good matches. But they show those matches on TV. Not always. They no, they do. They do for every the past two weeks. They've been showing house show matches on the, on their TV show. Okay. And and I understand your point about making the house shows seem important. I get that. And WWE does need to do that. I think the live specials help. Um, but I think Ring of Honor makes their house shows too important. Why? Because, because they have things that actually happen on their house shows. Which... I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but it doesn't translate to their television program correctly, and it makes them lose a lot of momentum. Okay. Like, they have number one contenders determined for things that happen at house shows, and we never get to see that on TV. They show us other stuff on TV. It, it They need to figure out a better balance between house show and televised product. Mm-hmm. I think uh, one issue is money. Um, I want to point out that uh, all the video equipment that was out there uh, was untethered. The okay, DVD, but the, they, they have commentary. They have commentary, Com- yes. Commentary can change an entire scheme of things, Sorg. Mm-hmm. Like um, the, the, show, the Ring of Honor show, and we talked about this a little bit on the Midweek War. The Ring of Honor TV show they had right after their pay-per-view opened with Silas Young with no repercussions about the pay-per-view at all. Right, right. So I think And that's something that can be taken care of by a couple simple lines of dialogue in the commentary. And Garza right. is saying mm-hmm. I need to follow the DVDs and the results. No, I shouldn't have to. It's a television program. But you also have to, to think. You also think that they're, they're also adapting. And yes, I, I, they, they have a different mentality. And this was a, a promotion that was solely supported for many many years simply on those dig- those dvds people that followed their dvds and watched the shows so one thing they have perfected is making you want to go to a show and you went to that show and felt like it mattered and you're good and maybe you did or you didn't pick up dvds in the meantime so there needs to be a segmentation that happens and our kickstart has been cracked open on the microphone <laughs> not a sponsor um <laughs> but sort and and i understand for your company Mm-hmm. that's fine that's all well and good but if you're showing a weekly television product you have to have some consistency there mm-hmm. like you can show you can show all the house show matches you want you can show me all the japanese guys coming in that have no bearing on storylines but have your commentary reflect what's going on to try mm-hmm. and help drive a narrative okay. because after every pay-per-view there's like two to three weeks where they don't follow up on anything and mm-hmm. it kills any kind of momentum that mm-hmm. they have in bringing in me as a true fan. Right. Because I, I saw the last pay-per-view. I loved it. I really enjoyed it. And then I tune in next week and there's no follow up. It, it, right. it, it devalues that too. Okay. I, I get what you're saying. And, and I think, and again, I go back to, I really think the, the problem on ring of Honor's side is Monday I'm sorry, money, money and being nimble with those productions, unfortunately. Um, especially if you watch that Wednesday on Destination America, they've already had that in the can. They're not given the flexibility to put anything in there, change it, whatever, uh, that they could get from that pay-per-view, but, I think. It's already sure. out there on the production side. So, wait, 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 I want to get to Bert because he's been uh, kind of okay. mm-hmm-ing over okay. here. So I think he's got something on his mind about I think, this. I, mean, I think it shows the, the difference of Ring of Honor. I mean, Ring of Honor... As a standalone show, be it a live event or a or a or a TV show, if you want to watch the best wrestling, uh, you know, in terms of in ring work on a singular show, it's Ring of Honor. Mm-hmm. I, I think by far, bar none, you don't know why they're wrestling, and I think you know Mike referred to that with commentary. You know, you don't you don't know why they're wrestling. You don't know why anything is happening. You know stuff. You know good stuff's happening but you don't know why you don't know any context. And I think that's always been sort of the thing with ring of honor. I mean, there's been overarching storylines, but if I tune into an episode of WWE raw, you know, yeah, they beat us over the head with it with, you know, last week, last week, but at least I know why they're wrestling in some, in in some circumstances, but ring of Mm -hmm. honor, I'm going to see a great product, but 
am I necessarily invested in the storyline? Am I necessarily invested in the characters to care? Mm-hmm. Which they've gotten better at. They have gotten a little better at that. But a still little, but they go. don't they don't maintain the momentum. Right, right. That's the important part. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. So I, I think I think it is philosophies. I think that it is the competition first over storylines. Um, so maybe it comes off disjointed. And again, two but, different I mean, philosophies. They know again, what's again, going to happen at the shows. Mm, they can record. Com- I, the, I they, know, they know what's going to happen at the pay per view. Sorg. They know. Uh, you're talking they know about what's going to happen at the pay per view. You're, you're talking about they, they know what's going to happen at the pay per view. They know what's going to happen at the pay per view when they record, or they know what's going to at pay per view, so they're going to go and insert stuff in. And I'm saying you can't do that because it's delivered. Because of the way their production works, I think. But it, but their production happens before the pay-per-view. Right. So if you know Jay Lethal is going to retain both his titles, if you know Silas Young is going to gain possession of the boys, but you're going to have him on your product, when you record the commentary, have a line in there saying, oh, Silas Young, he didn't bring the boys out with him he, because he has them in the back chopping wood. That's all you need to that do. Is something that, that's still that's still something you would have to do in post. Yeah, because because you don't know. You say they know what they're going to do at the pay per view. Wrestling companies don't always know what they're going to do the next. And a lot of things like what show. if you do okay, this? So you, for you, the they, they, they may have an idea. Yeah, I know. I I, I think yeah. that yeah, it, it still it goes down to organization. It goes down to other things, and I just yeah. don't think as a company they're nimble enough to do that. I mean, that's why we have the janky thing where they do commentary live in a studio over Impact Wrestling because they only have so yeah. much money to do this, and that's how they try to cover it up. And you see how that goes. Um, they're trying to make it relevant and recent feeling, right? Um, and I would rather Ring of Honor have the problem they have right now than do something like Impact goes, because I think that was horribly handled um, when, well, when they uh, did that. Impact would be better if they had better commentators. Well, in general, but but anyways. All right, on that note, I want to find out what you guys learned from wrestling this week, and uh, and we're going to get into our interview on Indie Mayhem Show with, <laughs> oh, let's go Bart LeGrand and find out go. what he really thinks about the Indies around this area. Uh-huh. Ah! Uh-huh. 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 Who was, who wants to go first on what you learned here? I'll do it. Hit me up. Hopefully, we taught you something tonight. <laughs> uh, not yet. You've just given me some very good and very filthy ideas. Uh, um, I learned uh, that there's an echo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I thought it was someone else talking. <laughs> um, I learned <laughs> we got to lock that, that down. Uh, Kane really is the best, whatever he is. <laughs> uh, whatever it says on that mug, I forget what it is. What is he? Director, Director of, of operations. operations. Director of right. operations. Director. Of, he really is the best. He's so over the top and happy. And then when he popped out of that uh, that uh, ambulance, yep. and his leg hurt, and he limped for a little while, and then he just like stomped his foot yeah. and walked fine. Ah, that was exciting. And the HR. That, evalu- why can't all of Raw be like that one moment? The HR evaluation said so. Yes. And actually, uh, she <laughs> she really does work for WWE HR. Oh, no, really? Some, someone found her LinkedIn page. That's amazing. Yeah. She is actually an HR rep at WWE. Yep. That's so great. Um, all right. Well, I learned this week that uh, I think the Lana and Dolph Ziggler feud may have ended over Twitter. What? I huh? think I think it might have ended over Twitter because last night they were showing the commercial for the Total Divas finale where Dolph Ziggler was hitting on Nikki Bella. Mm-hmm. And Lana and Nikki Bella got into a Twitter argument about it. Oh, boy. So I think they may have ended that over Twitter because Lana's injured. Hmm. I'm not even sure, but hmm. it seemed very definitive. What about you, Eamon? Uh, I learned what I learned tied into the the thing Lunchbox learned. Uh, I learned that uh, anytime there is a person on a WWE wrestling show who is not a recognizable professional wrestler, I will get a tweet <laughs> or a message less than a minute later asking if I know who they are and if they're an indie wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> which, which is why it was so amazing that Eamon didn't know the second person on that TNA match. <laughs> I had no clue. No clue. Uh, uh, so great. Yeah. 
<laughs> Bert, what did you learn in wrestling this week? I, I think I learned that yet again, anytime something gets hot in wrestling, John Cena is going to be right there as, as he was with the New Day. And I think it's the Dusty Rhodes syndrome all over again. You know, mm. back in the NWA, Dusty Rhodes always managed to glum himself on to the next big thing just to stay relevant. And I think the same thing is holding true for Cena here. Granted, you know, last time it was only one shot deal with the New Day. But as soon as something gets hot, John Cena is the first one there to co sign on it and, and try to keep himself relevant in the process. I think that's more giving them the rub, personally. I, I think it might be, the, it could be a little bit the other way around, mm-hmm. I think. But it might be, it might be a little bit of, you know, one hand, one, one hand washing the other. Okay. Okay. All right. And from uh, the Facebooks, uh, we had uh, from the Facebook group, uh, Alex Carr's learned that the WWE actually has an HR department, despite evidence to the contrary over the years. <laughs> okay, that's a good point. Uh, Mr. Garza learned of wrestling revolu- the wrestlingrevolution.com. Check them out. Uh, learned that Reigns Wyatt saga will continue at TLC tech guys later ladders and chairs <laughs> <laughs> that was fantastic the best use and by the way on the raw wrap up saving the tables right sword you're right exactly yeah. on, on the raw wrap up we actually had a uh, another uh, uh, experienced foreign object in professional wrestling wheels uh, wheel uh, uh, to, to give his opinion as a similar foreign object in a wrestling match because he was um, uh, again his wheelchair uh, shoved by Jimmy DeMarco towards the Necro Butcher uh, <laughs> several years ago at a Super Indie I think Super Indie eight or nine perhaps uh, so there's that it was the two day one it's over on Indie Wrestling US look for Necro Butcher versus Jimmy DeMarco uh, so there's that uh, also Garza learned that. Kane once again murdered people on live TV, but as always, we'll just ignore it. Um, uh, Matt Carlin has also learned that uh, John Cena hates fun things like the New Day. Right. right. <laughs> I was kind of... Come on. Kyle learned that hustle, loyalty... Lo- <clears throat> hustle, loyalty, booty! Is that good? <laughs> Is that good for you? Yes. All right. You uh, um, also, uh, from the Facebook page... Uh, uh, Max learned that Kane is a badass. I believe that is m- oh. mistaken. Max from wrestling with subtitles that we had on oh. a while ago. Also, Sorg, I I got a I got a text from Jen Collins. Mm-hmm. She learned her shirt still smells like Dean Ambrose. She's not watching anything, guys. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, also, I think we had some from the chat room. No, we didn't. That's it. Everybody learned everything. What did I learn? What did, what did I you learn? learn what did I learn that um, fans in Ring of Honor are very respectful when Ray Rowe and um, Divac uh, come to their car and they're all still lined up trying to get out of the parking garage and here they come <laughs> with their bags in tow. Uh, so that's what I learned this week. Um, and also I learned that I can't get a cop at Cal U to tr- tase wheels. <laughs> Sorg, that I think is just a matter of not trying hard enough. I was yeah. trying. Like, I was like, man, if I try harder, I might get arrested right now. <laughs> exactly. Not trying hard enough. Yes. So, guys, Wrestling Mayhem Show has been so much fun hanging with you guys here on Tuesday night, as every Tuesday night, live at WrestlingMayhemShow.com about 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, you guys can join us in the chat room like these fine folks like Garza, uh, Alex Cars, and uh, and so on and so forth. Everybody else <clears> that comes in there. Wheels. Wheels is usually in there, too. I haven't seen him for a little bit, so I think I think Bert scared him away. Um, <laughs> check Dude, out everything. Like, Damn you, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. There he is. Dan me? Dan me? Yeah, Dan you. Dan I me. think he meant damn, but hmm. still. Uh, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe to us. Share it. Check out the articles. Uh, again, uh, Matt Carlin's had a great article this past week. He actually talked to the guy that jumped in the ring at Night of Champions. Um, and and talked about Was his time one in, phone call. He got his well Facebook. Apparently, that one Facebook and talk, talk about how he only spent three <laughs> days in jail. How he visited the WWE offices and why he did it. WrestlingMayhemShow dot com. You can drop us a line. Let us know what you think about that. Other things on the show, suggestions, emails, what you thought about wrestling this week at four one two two zero six WMS zero or the email address. 
Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Thanks to our friend Basic Sickness at BasicSickness.com for the intro, outro music for this and the Indie Mayhem Show. Free music over there. Uh, check us out, Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. And support all of our friends obsessed with wrestling. Oh, no, that's the wrong one. Power to the Smarks. We, that's, that was a random website. Wow. Yeah. Um, the WrestlingRevolution.com, Pro Wrestling Tees. Check out our Spreadshirt shop at IndieWrestling.us. Uh, Slice on Broadway, Bold Pittsburgh, all that stuff. Supporting the show, support them back. Thank you, Bert Legrand, for joining us. Check out his brand new Twitter. Get brand him the new. followers. Everybody follow him uh, at Real OSBL on Old the Twitter. Old Bert Legrand. He'll be joining us on the Indie Mayhem Show. At Amen 2, please, with a number two. There it is at inspireprowrestling.com. You can hear his voice talking over the professionalized wrestling. Look out very soon for Battle Wars 2, where he's hanging out with very, the Chikara. Very, very soon. Very soon. Chikara versus Inspire Pro Wrestling down there. And of course, Mad Mike at Mad Mike4883, uh, now being future endeavored from tonight's show. Oh, <laughs> well, that oh, got sour. Break. I'm sorry. That's well, not the reaction. I, I, I guess Jen Collins is doing the Told Divas wrap up. Alone tomorrow. Hmm. Oh. We'll have to go back through the wrap ups because I'm actually catching up. I'm on episode five from the season now. I'm back on Hulu. So prepare for a lot of free mode, Sorg. Free mode. And <laughs> also, uh, DJ Lunchbox of the fantastic, soon to be award winning panel riot.com. Yeah, I don't know what awards I'm going to win, but I'm going to win them. <laughs> Uh, it, it, it is true, Sorg. Uh, Panel Riot, uh, panelriot.com. You can check that out at your earliest convenience. It's available anywhere fine podcasts are sold. This week, uh, I'm coming to you with intern Stan, with uh, Watson from the Panel Bunker, and uh, we talk about all kinds of things. Star Wars comics, uh, Jessica Jones, um, uh, a third thing that I can't remember right now. Um, and it is available right now, right at this very moment. Go to your podcast feed, search for Panel Riot, uh, mm-hmm. and enjoy Thank you, everybody else, for joining us. We'll see you guys next week. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This week on Wrestling Mayhem Show, we talk about Kane just being amazing is International Podcast Day. We want to know what you're listening to. Shit. Lost my momentum. Mm. Hey guys, Wrestling Ma'am Show. This week we're talking about Kane just being awesome. It's International Podcast Day when we went. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey guys, Wrestling Ma'am Show. This week we talk about Kane, the New Day, just being awesome on General and WWE International Podcast Day and what you're listening to in wrestling podcasts. Help with a little pro wrestling group therapy, Bound for Glory. Hey, that's happening this weekend and so much more. Stick around.